Yeah, you know, you're always hard on yourself, but one of the best movies in the 1980s and the first movie directed by a woman to cross the $100 million mark, big with Tom Hanks. <laughs> Where did this project come from? Could you tell us the backstory? Well, I had just, I had been asked to take over a movie, which I hadn't even been in enough one-camera things to know from that. I only did multi-camera shows. And I was in New York. I had dinner with Whoopi, who I knew. It was her birthday. We went to dinner, and Larry Gordon and Joel Silver, who don't speak to each other now, by the way, <laughs> but um, they saw us, and they say, they knew me from Paramount, so they knew I came to work on time. I was reliable and all that stuff. So they called and they said, they yelled. I came home to get winter clothes, and I went to LA to get winter clothes because I bought an apartment in New York. And um, so they said, screamed at me, you're going to take over this movie. I said, could I read it, you know? <laughs> and I said, I've never done this, you know? I, never, I haven't even acted or not. And I called my brother. They said, you can't tell anyone. <laughs> so I called my brother and I, he said, it's a strange business. They pay you to learn. <laughs> And Jim Brooks, who was another mentor of mine at the time, said, it wouldn't be your movie anyway. You know, it's someone else's movie. Like the public looks and cares that someone else started it. They don't care about that crap. Um, they either like it or they don't. So I got through it without falling down, which was one of my brothers said, don't fall down. Okay, and I, call, I have a good phone book. So I call them people to fill in, like John Lovitz, or Lee Phil Hartman, and Marie Stewart, my daughter, my brother. Jimmy Belushi, you know, want to be in a movie? T Tracy Ullman, I'm pregnant, I don't care. <laughs> Michael McGann, come, you'll be, you have a talk English, you'll be at the fancy party. So what did you have to do to convince Tom? Did you have to Oh, um, then, then, so then Jim puts big on my desk, and I didn't know the world had turned that down, too, because I don't read the trades, or whatever you're reading, <laughs> you get <laughs> um, But, uh, they had, like, father, like, son, and vice versa. It was already cast and going. So I didn't know, you know. So it read like a sweet afternoon special with a universal theme. When I'm big, I'm gonna. Everyone's had that thought in their head that I know. I had it in mind, so I just went, okay. Then I found out about the other scripts, so I read them and took anything that was similar out. And Tom said no. Everyone said no. Because they knew about the other movies. And so then I went a different way, you know, with casting and asked Robert De Niro. That was a real man. <laughs> <laughs> Not a boy man, a man man. And I knew Bobby for years. Now who's in every comedy coming out? So don't tell me I'm crazy. I knew Bobby was funny in a different way than Tom is funny. And he's very smart behavior wise. You know, he'd always say, my first instinct would be to look eye level with my friend Billy, not down, because they were the same size. And that's behavior, that's thinking. Mm -hmm. that was, so once Bob wanted to do it, now they came around. So Bob <laughs> gave me a validity at a time where I really didn't have much. Mm -hmm. So then Tom wanted to do it, and I knew Tom from Bosom Buddies, because they also did one of them. I did every show on the lot. I think I ran from <laughs> yeah. stage to stage because we had the ratings and they didn't. So 